thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. This is about learning. We have the basic English immediately. Today we start Lamed Hey, Lamed Aleph, and we're starting from the word Rava Amar. Rava Amar, and it's I'm in how many lines it is? Eleven lines from the bottom. It's eleven lines from the bottom of thirty-five A. Okay, let's give a um, a, a little introduction, and then uh, it's a very unique Gemara that we have today. Okay, basically, what we're after this whole uh, discussion about the girl that gets uh, that uh, receives a fine if she's if she's raped, the father receives the fine. Um, he said, but what about the perpetrator? She got lashes. We have a ver- we have a Mishnah in uh, in Marcus that he gets lashes. Usually, we say that you don't get lashes. And also get the fine. We had to answer that. We had Rabbi Yechonan's answer that it depends if he was warned or not. If he's warned, he's, he gets lashes. If he's not warned, then not. Then, after this whole thing, we had a Rish Lakish's view that says that maybe it's following Rameyer. It's following Rameyer. Then we had a problem with another Mishnah. We said that that Mishnah was two different people were doing it. We had that whole thing. Turns out, what we're holding right now is that Rish Lakish and Rabbi Yechanan are actually arguing about if there's a an action that would incur a death penalty or that would incur lashes. However, in the instance in this in this scenario specifically, there are there is no death penalty or lashes. Does that exempt the monetary payment just because the action is the severe action that would have incurred those? Those uh, those other punishments. And the rule of Kamle Bidirabine should still be applied, that you only get the more severe punishment, which he doesn't actually get. And therefore, that absolves him of the lesser punishment. So Rish Lakish said that yes, that he doesn't get the lesser punishment because he has the more severe one. Now, even though that's not being applied because it's Bishagik. And Rabbi Yechanan says, no. What we just finished now is that really there's no machlekes regarding chiyuve misa. If someone does a crime that he's deserving of a capital punishment, everyone agrees that there's no monetary payment that comes along with that. The whole question is, what about if there was malchus? If there was, if there's lashes. However, he's not getting the lashes for whatever reason because he's doing it b'shoigig. Um, so what about then? Rish Lakish says that he's going to be exempt uh, uh, from the payment because the action should is deserving of, of lashes, and that's enough. The deserving of the lashes exempts him. And Rabbi Yechelen says, no, he's not getting lashes. He's going to be chayef. Now, what we learned is from, we had a question. The Rav actually introduced the question um, that we have a source. Why does everyone agree why does everyone agree when it comes to a death penalty, capital punishment, that there's no monetary payment that comes along with that? We learned it from a source called Tana de Bechizkia. They taught that it says in the verse, Maka Ad, it says, Maka Adam or Maka Behema. Someone that hits a man and someone that hits an animal. Well, just, and that's a, a, a comparison there. Just like when someone hits an animal, it doesn't matter how he did it, if he did it on purpose or he did it by mistake, he has to pay for those damages. So too, if someone hits a man, it doesn't matter if he did it on purpose or he did it by mistake, he doesn't have to pay for the damages. Okay, that was the, by the death penalty. So, okay, so the way to resolve that, how how was there machlekes, Rabbi Yechon, Rish Lakish, we said, that's referring to the death penalty. So, uh, so therefore, everyone would agree to the Tanah de Bechizkiah. What about when it comes to lashes? So, Abaya. Was it Abaya? Yeah, Abaya learns. What does Rish Lakish hold when it comes to the lashes? So lashes, Rish Lakish says, even if he doesn't get the lashes, he's still exempt from the monetary payment because that's he doesn't get the lesser punishment, even though he's not getting the more severe punishment, but he's deserving of it in some way. He doesn't get the lesser punishment. Now, how does he do that? So Abaya explained that we learn it from Russia, Russia. It says by the death penalty, the word Russia. It says by lashes, the word Russia. In case Russia, so that tells me that they're they're 
that um, comparison tells me that the same rule that by the death penalty, it didn't matter if he did it on purpose or if he did it by mistake, there was no monetary payment that came along. So to buy lashes, it doesn't matter how he did the action. There's no monetary payment that comes along. Rav Amar, that's where we start today. Rav Amar Asyamaka Maka. We don't have to learn from the animal to capital punishment. The lashes in the three-step process, animal to capital punishment, to the lashes, that there's no monetary payment when there's a more severe punishment, um, and even when it's done by, even when it's done by accident, by, not by accident, by shaygig, when it's done uh, unintentionally, we don't have to do that. We can go directly from the animal to the lashes. Okay, how do we do that? It says, Maka Maka. Amalei Rav Papa le Rava. Rav Papa is a student of Rava. He says, hi Maka, what are you talking about? Which Maka, which Pasuk, what, 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 what ex, uh, explain please. It says, I lema Maka behemi yishal mena Maka the mumas. If you're going to say from that Pasuk that says someone that hits an animal, he has to pay someone that hits a man, he's put to death. That's not talking about monetary payments. It's talking about the death penalty. So you're, we wanted to talk about lashes, actually. It if it would be talking about lashes, then I would do the comparison that would go like this. Just like an animal, there's always payment. When there's lashes, there's never payment. That's what we would have done. It, it's the inverse, okay? Ella, um, hi, maka. Well, it has to be some from another source. Maka nefesh behemi shalmena, nefesh tachas nefesh. It says if someone hits an animal, he has to pay. What does the Pasuk mean over there? Nefesh tachas nefesh? Must mean for the animal. What does it say in the commentary? A life for a life. Yeah, yeah I don't have the commentary there what that means. Um, it probably means the value of the animal. And then, and next to that Pasuk, it says, if someone damages his friend, puts a blemish, a bruise in his friend, what he does to him, that's what he, that's what is done to him. What he does to the victim, that's what's done to him, which means he gets Malchus. That's the, uh, the Gemara says, but you, you told me that it was Maka Maka. In that Pasuk that talks about the mum, ba'amise, kasherasa, kenyasa, it doesn't even say the word maka. It says, well, anan haka, ka, I mean, we didn't mean the word. We meant the context. It's talking about getting hit. It's talking about lashes. That's good enough. It says maka by the animal. It says maka by the lashes. Good morning. It's come to tell me that there's that, um, that inverse relationship. The animal, there's always a payment. By the man, there's never going to be a payment if there's going to be la the lashes. Commercial one second. That pasuk is talking about someone that damaged his friend. That's exactly the wrong example, because that's the one that there is a payment for. We have all the halachas. If someone that damages his friend, he has to pay. It's like a hundred percent incorrect. That's correct. Right. This is exactly the one where there's a payment for it. I'm finishing 35A. Just that root on the bottom. Gemara says, "Amenin lakash yesh b'shava pruta, tenein lakash yesh b'shava pruta." Well, you have this juxtaposition that's really not necessary. Um, but if it's not necessary for when someone is hit, and the damages are a value of a pruta because over there there's a payment. So let's say that the person was hit, and the damages are not the value of a payment of of a of a pruta. And therefore, if there's no monetary payment, all there would be would be the lashes. We had a source for that before. So here we are, actually, we have a scenario where there's going to be lashes by Chayvel Bachavera because the bruise was less than the value of a pruta. And we're saying that there's no payment there. Okay. When it says, well, there's no payment because there was no damage. There was no value. Up to the damage. That's why there's no payment. It's not because there's never a payment. Over there, there's no payment because the, what didn't have the value. It's not embarrassment and all the other kinds. Of right. Someone gets bruised because he slapped him. He doesn't get bruised. Yeah. But it's in public. Yeah, we, we, I think we mentioned that before. 
when we quoted this thing, Hakash in Bishav Pruta said, um, we, met, we brought that in. What about the embarrassment and all of that? Pain, instant pain. Oh, I'm going too far. Everybody saw it. That's right. I don't remember why we answered. Do you remember? Oh, in modern halacha, right. 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 That would be that would be after the smicha because we don't do uh, we don't do the knas knas bubble. Um, okay. Uh, There's no. If there's monetary damage, it kind of trucks along the other times, like Belchus. Well, I didn't, I didn't know that. Uh -huh. Although, the Ramos, there's none of this. Right. On that. Right. Yeah. Based on, on in the Hilfus Dayanim, why are we allowed to do any judgments today? It's because of the Shlichusayu Kavdina and the Gemara says that we're, we're really following out the judgment from those early courts. But that shlichus would only be for actual restitution, not for right. right. So the Gemara says now, safe, safe, labar teshlumenu. But there's no um, over here. The reason why he's exempt from paying is because there's nothing to pay. If there was something to pay, then he probably would pay. You were telling me that he's never going to pay because there's a there's a lashes even if he's not getting it, right? That's what we're trying to say. We're trying to explain the opinion of Rishlakish. Is the lashes yeah. more severe than the payment? So far. So far, we think lashes is more severe than payment. So the lashes uh, is more severe than the payment, and therefore, and therefore, uh, he's going to be exempt from the payment, not only when he gets the lashes, but even if he doesn't get the lashes, because it's an action that incurs the punishment of lashes, if he would do it on purpose, even when he does it by by uh, unintentionally or not being warned, whatever, and he doesn't get the lashes, he's still exempt according to his lashes. Well, where do we get that from? That he that should happen. So we have to compare it to, to we we thought we we're comparing it to the death penalty according to according to Abaya, according to Rava. We're comparing it to the animal where he damages the animal. There's always going to be a payment by the animal. So too, when there's going to be lashes, there's never going to be a payment, even if he doesn't get the lashes. But he has to pay something. Nothing. No. So now the question is, but one second, the case that you just brought was Chayvul Bachavei, right? In order to make that a case where he doesn't have to pay, you told me that it's a case where there was no monetary damage. So, and that's where he gets the lashes. But the reason why there's no payment there is because there's no monetary damage. It sounds like if there was a monetary damage, then he would have to pay. Where is this like Tzrich? It gives an interesting answer. The Bahadi Demachi Karash Yerayim Delay. He damn. He hit the person. He's supposed to. He's supposed to get lashes, but he didn't do it on uh, intentionally. What does he mean? Didn't do it. Uh, Maybe he thought that he was allowed to hit. I don't know why, how it's possible. The other guy started. <laughs> <laughs> he thought he was allowed. Okay, so um, premeditated. <laughs> premeditated is the is With the, the problem. Is the intention? Doing so. He's doing it not intentionally. Yeah. Well. Um, so he's supposed to get lashes. Why isn't there a payment? Because he didn't cause the damage. So if there's no payment, so then why are you telling me he doesn't pay because of the lashes? Actually, that the, makes sense. Right. So the Gemara says now that there is another damage that's happening that's not exactly the same thing. While he was hitting him, he, caught, he tore his silk. Ah. And so for the lashes, for the for the hitting his friend that he's going to get because there's no payments fitting his friend. But the tearing of the silk, there should have been a payment for. But because there's a lashes that comes along, he doesn't have to do that payment. Okay, it's the end of this piece. Amalei Rafiel Rafa. What happens now is very unique. 
no, first we have a question, but what's going to happen here, this page and the top of the next page, we have a summary of about five blot. Now, it doesn't actually summarize it. It just references everything that we learned over the last five pages. That was, so you have to keep it. You had to have kept all of that in mind. The Rashi over here spells it, you know, reminds you of everything that was said. And it spells it out. But it's a very interesting uh, review of every opinion that came up in the last five pages. It gets repeated on this. Uh, but first, it starts off with a question. Rav Chia says to Rava, I, I have a question on this. I don't know how Rav Chia spoke to Rava. But um, yeah, on the charts, it doesn't, it does not fit. Rav Yehuda, when Rav Yehuda passed away, Naila Rava. Rav Yehuda is a student of Rav. Rav is a student of Rav Chia. Rav Chia to speak to Rava is very, uh, it must be a different Rav Chia. It must be a different Rava. No, it's a, it must be a different Rav Chia. It's a different Rav Chia, obviously. According to the Tana de Bechizkia that did that uh, comparison, uh, inverse comparison, um, that when someone hits an animal, there's always going to be a payment no matter how he caused that damage. Intentionally, unintentionally, there's always going to be a payment. So when he hits the person, there's never going to be a payment, even if there's no lashes, intentionally, unintentionally. He's, there's never going to be a payment. Uh, well, not, not really when he hits the person, because there is going to be a payment over there. But when other cases of lashes, there's going to be no, um, no payment. How do you know that all of this was on a weekday? And then you can't make a distinction that there's always going to be a payment by the animal. And therefore, there's never going to be a payment when there's lashes. Dilma, well, it's not really lashes. Um, it was really the death penalty. That's really what it was. Dilma, maybe he's hitting the animal on Shabbos. See. What happened on Shabbos? If a man bruises an animal on Shabbos. It's a problem. Let's say he slaughters the animal or something. Oh. Well, if he did it, um, then there would be a payment because it's not really a, uh, a, a the violation of Shabbos. Because it was unintentional. If he does it bemaze it, then he violated Shabbos, and there's going to be no payment. So the the whole source, the ba- the foundation of the whole Tana de Bechizkia, was that it doesn't matter if he damaged the animal b'shoigig or bemaze it. There's always going to be a payment, and based on that foundation, we then compare it over to the capital punishment that it doesn't matter if there's really a capital punishment because he does it intentionally, or there's no capital punishment, he does it unintentionally, there's never going to be a payment along with that. That was that inverse comparison. So that the basis of it was that there's always going to be a payment for the animal, but that that's only if it was on a weekday. If it was on Shabbos, then there will not always be a payment for the animal because it depends if it was on purpose or not. So he answers back, he says, don't think like that. Someone that hits an animal has to pay. Someone that hits a man is capital punishment. He, mur- he kills the man. What's the case? If there was not, no warning, if he, the person, the murderer, wasn't warned before, why does he get put to death? He only gets put to death if there was a warning there. It must be that he was warned. The Bishabis and if it was Shabbos, Maka Behemi Yishalmena. If he was warned, don't slaughter that animal. There's gonna be a, a, a death penalty, or it's gonna it's the violation of Shabbos, and you're gonna have to pay for it too. But he doesn't need warning when it comes to payments. Um, but if he was warned, that means he's doing it intentionally. And if that's the case that we're doing, and you're doing a comparison between the animal damages to the person to the animal death, to the person uh death which is going to be capital punishment, they have to be the same case. The person was being warned. So then the animal, the person that's, uh, the, that's, uh, that's killing the animal has to be, ha- had to have been warned. That's the case, then it's bemazed. Now, if it's bemazed, Maka Bahamia Shalmana is going to have to pay. It was on Shabbos. El Alav Bechal. 
He just proved it to us that it had to be on the weekday, or else there's no payment. Okay. So this warning, could could you have like a sign be like someone? The warning? Or does it have to be an individual telling us? They have no, they have to tell him. Yeah. And he's supposed to actually respond when they warn him. Yeah. He's supposed to say, I don't know what he, what they do about the death, but if they but he's supposed to say, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Alpha Peking. Yes. He has to indicate that he's doing it intentionally. You understand what he's doing. Okay. You ready? Here goes the this big review of every opinion that ever came up here. Amali Rav Papa Labaya. Rav Papa, we said, was a student of Rav. He's also a student of Abaya. Remember Rabba? Rabba said that, um, first of all, Rav Meir holds that there's never a, I'm sorry, there's always going to be a payment. Right. There's always going to be a payment. However, however, um, when it came to a when it came to the death penalty, Rob Mayer would agree that there's no payment. It's only by the lashes that Rob Mayer says there is a payment. When it came to the death penalty, this is Rabba's opinion. It wasn't uh, necessarily so. However, why um, why when someone slaughters the animal on chat, remember someone stole an animal and then he slaughters it? Um, so we said that that he had to pay. According to a mayor, he had to pay four or five times. One second, there's a death penalty. Why does he have to pay four or five times? The mayor says by the death penalty, according to Rabba, that uh, that exempts the monetary payment. Capital punishment exempts. The mayor would agree to that. It was only the lashes that went. So, so Rabba explained that the mayor agrees when there's a knas, a fine, it would exempt the restitution, but it doesn't exempt the fine. The whole purpose of the fine is to is imposed on top of everything else. That's the fine. So even though there was a capital punishment, the fine's still there. According to Rabba. Even though there's a death penalty, he still has to pay. Who does, who's the author of our Mishnah? If it's Reb Meir's view, who holds of this? Kasha Bitei. And there's a kasha. What about the Mishnah that's coming up on the next page? It says that if someone rapes uh, his daughter, there's no fine for that. Why? Because there's a death penalty. One second. Reb Meir, according to Rabba, Reb Meir holds that the fine is imposed even when there is a death penalty. Just on so who's the author of the Mishnah? Can't be Reb Meir. Just on the week, on for, like the violent one for Shabbos, and one for the week. Oh. Down. oh, so one second. So let, let's go back to that. There was an option here. If you take a look at Rashi, Kashabite, I don't know, you know, Rashi Kashabite, Rashi spells this out. He says, We had another answer. Rish Lakish said that when the, the animal was slaughtered on Shabbos, what happened was one person stole it yeah. and another person slaughtered during it. The week, slaughtered yeah, but that's another case. It was during the week. But here we were able to say, that one person stole it, and then he's not a shaykhet. So he gives it to someone else to share. So who gets the de Shabbos death penalty, the capital punishment for violating Shabbos was the shaykhet. Who has to pay the fine? That was the other. So we had a way of saying that the death penalty doesn't come together with the fine. If he would have done it himself, he wouldn't have to pay. If that's the case, according to Rish Lakish. So why is there no knas when someone rapes his own daughter? Because it's a death penalty. So there's no kanas. But according to Rabbah, that said that it was the same person that was slaughtering it. And he holds that there's no, that, that even when there is a, that, that, the, that the fine is imposed, um, e even when there is a death penalty. Regardless so why is it, re right. So why is there a, a, a no fine for the daughter? So Gemara says, well, let's try another option. That was our review of, of uh, Rabba and Rish Lakish and the, the, that answer there.
if it's Reb Meir, then it's Kashibita. Ika Reb Nuchani Ben Akana. Maybe we'll go like Reb Nuchani Ben Akana. Now Rashi spells this out now. He says, um, there was a case where someone burnt a, uh, a haystack on, on Shabbos and Yom Kippur. Reb Nuchani Ben Akana says it doesn't make a difference. He doesn't have to, he, he doesn't have to pay for it. He doesn't have to pay. Reb Nuchani Ben Akana held that the violation of karas, the karas, uh, punishment also takes away a monetary payment. Okay. Our Mishnah didn't say that. Our Mishnah said that Karis um, doesn't take away a monetary payment because that's coming from heaven. The monetary payment is from this court, right? However, how would that resolve our issue? Um, we would say that the Bitai is a, uh, the, his daughter is a death penalty from, from uh, the court. So there's going to be no payment there. That would answer the question. The only problem is, according to Reb Nechini Ben Akana, Kasha Chesay. So why is there a monetary payment by when someone rapes his own sister? Where over there, there's a karis. That doesn't fit with Reb Nechini Ben Akana. Reb Nechini Ben Akana says that karis takes it away. The monetary payment by a chesay. We have a problem here. Well, they said it was capital punishment and then something else. Capital punishment if he rapes his daughter. Karas if he rapes his sister. Ikara, okay. Ikara Yitzchak. Now, Rabbi Yitzchak wasn't mentioned yet. Now we're introducing a new opinion. Rabbi Yitzchak, his opinion is that, that if someone gets Karas, there's no Malkus that, that comes along with Karas. And Malkus doesn't take away a Karas. If we'll say it's Rabbi Yitzchak, then he doesn't have the issue of he doesn't have the issue of of the Kamle Bidramine here. He would hold that Achisai does not get um Achisei has a payment. Why? Because yeah, I, I, there is a way of looking at Karas. What do you say? Um, I would say like this. Rabbi ben Akana says that Karas takes away the monetary payment. That was Rabbi Nechini ben Akana's view. Now the explanation could be, possible explanation for that is that why does Karas take away the monetary payment? Because so one of the payment. ways of taking away karis is by malchus. Now that's both coming from the court and, and the monetary payments from coming from the court. So Mnuchunim Benakana says karis and, and malchus really are, are associated. So if that's the case, so then it exempts the monetary payment. Rabbi Yitzchak says no, that there is no malchus for karis. And therefore, um, uh, anything that incurs karis does not take away a monetary payment. So a chaisai really does, if someone rapes the sister, there really is the knas, fits perfectly with our Mishnah. But if that's the case, then kasha mamzeres. It, it, it would answer one, one issue, but it creates another issue. And the other issue is that he would say that a mamzeres um, gets a, uh, uh, does not get a knas. Because if there's malchus, if someone rapes a mamzeres, he's not allowed to marry her. He's not allowed to live with her. But um, he would say that because there's Malchus, then there's going to be no Knas. He agrees that Malchus takes away the Knas. He just holds that Karas is, in, is not associated with Malchus. So, but our Mishnah tells us that a Mamzeres gets a Knas. According to Rabbi Yitzchak, a Mamzeres should not get a Knas. So it can't be Rabbi Yitzchak. Knas is the fine punishment, the fine, the 50 coins that he has to pay the girl, the, the father of the girl. If he holds like Rabbi Yochanan, well, what does Rabbi Yochanan hold? That how did we how did we resolve the contradiction between the two Mishnayas? That there's a fine, a knas, and there's also lashes. Rabbi Yochanan said it depends if there was warning. If he's warned, then there's going to be lashes. If he's not warned, then there's just going to be a fine. So mitaritz like Rabbi Yochanan. He'll explain the Mishnah according to Rabbi Yochanan. That what? That that when it comes to a death penalty, there's no fine. 
because Rabbi Yechanan holds that that e even if it was Peshagig, even if it was Peshagig and he doesn't even get the death penalty, there was no fine, right? Uh, but if it's Malchus, if there is Malchus, then there is, a, then there, then there, then there, it depends how he did it. If he did it Peshagig, then there's going to be a fine. If he did it Pemesa, then there's not going to be a fine. Remember, Rabbi Yechanan argued with Rishlakish about um, if he has to actually get the Malchus to take away the, the, the monetary payment or not. Rishlakish said he doesn't need to get it. It's always ex exempt from the monetary payment. Rabbi Yechanan says, no, only if he actually gets it. That's by the Malchus. So what's going to come out is like this. Uh, if there's our Mishnah that says where the, there's a fine is talking about when it, it was Bishagig. Intentional. Unintentional. Unintentional. There was no warning. Bishagig is unintentional. Unintentional. And Mezid. Mezid, yeah. 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 Well, yeah. If he doesn't know if it's daughter, he's exempt anyway. Right? He's exempt anyway because when it comes to Misa, unintentional doesn't exempt him. The, uh, unintentional doesn't, uh, uh, unintentional still takes away the fine by Misa. Okay. Mm -hmm. You still have come labor the even if it's unintentional by Misa. When it comes to Malchus, unintentional makes a difference. And that's why he has to pay you still the Knast. Have like a carbon for a doubt and all this too. I'm yeah, that was there is a carbon for a doubt, but here we found out the truth. So, oh, okay. Ella is Lakish, but if he's going to follow Rish Lakish, Rish Lakish says that he doesn't have to pay a knas even for Malkus, even if it was Peshagig, right? Peshagig, right? So, why by a chaisai is it going to be a um. And why by Mamzeres is it going to be a knas? According to Rish Lakish, even if he wasn't warned, he should be exempt from the knas. Rish Lakish says, come uh, uh kicks in, and there's no payment, there's no monetary payment when there's a more severe payment that's there. El al Rabbi Yechanan's really. The Gemara answer is easy. You told me it fit, he fits like Rabbi Yechanan. That's how he holds it. goes like Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan made that distinction that it depends if he was warned or if he wasn't warned. And then there's a difference between if it was capital punishment or if it's just lashes, capital punishment it doesn't matter if, it, if he wasn't warned, still exempts him from the monetary payment. And by lashes, uh, uh, it depends if he was warned or not, so it fits perfectly. Amalir of Masnala Baya, that was a review of a few pages of Kamara. Amalir of Masnala Baya, of Masna, says to Abaya. According to Rish Lakish, he says that Chayvi Malkus is just like Chayvi Mises. Why, why do you, um, why do you pronounce it Malkus? Isn't it Makos? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the Hebrew is a Maka and the Aramaic, Aramaic term is Malkus, but I'm not sure. Ha -ha no, it may not even be Aramaic. It may even be Hebrew. It's, a, it's, it's another word for the same... Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why why there's two words for the same thing. Yeah. Any hit. Yeah. So according to Rish Lakish, that says Chayvi Malkus is the same as Chayvi Mises. Man Panag Man Tana de Palagla de Rab Nachini Ben Akana. We had a mission over there. Where was it in Shavuos? That said that someone that um, burns a haystack on Shabbos or burns a haystack on on um, on Yom Kippur, he's exempt from paying for the haystack. Shabbos, there's, there's a death penalty punishment for making a fire. And, um, and on Yom Kippur, there's a karis punishment for making a fire. Well, so um, Rabbi Chinn ben Akana says he's exempt in both cases. But the other opinion that argues on that says that he is high of on Yom Kippur. According to Rish Lakish, that says that Chayvi Malkus and are the same as Chayvi Mises.
So who is the author of the, who is the opinion that argues with Jerem Nechani Ben Akana? That says that there's a difference between Shabbos and, um, and, uh, and, and Karis, Mis and Karis. Who's going to make him pay? Who's the opinion? He says, that's not a problem. Either it goes like Reb Meir, Reb Meir holds like a Mishalim, E Reb Meir, E Reb Yitzchak. Reb Yitzchak says that uh, Malkus actually exempts from, from a payment. And, and Karis doesn't exempt from a payment. And that's the opinion that argues over there. That was the easy one. Okay. Taner Abana, the new uh, Brisa, says it. It's still going to throw us back into some opinions that we... Uh, I wonder if the Gemara is doing this intentionally just to give us a review. Taner Abanos, Taner Brisa, Arias. We'll explain what exactly we're referring to soon, but it means uh, forbidden, forbidden relations. Shniyas Larayas, secondary forbidden relations. We'll see what that's referring to as well. Whatever the case is, those fellows, uh, those relations, uh, if the man rapes the woman or lives with the woman or seduces that woman, obviously a young girl, because we're talking about the fine here. So. There's no fine and there's no pity. Uh, pity means there's no fine of the rapist and there's no fine of the mafate. Mafate is seduction, seducer. Islandess. Uh, I skipped it. I skipped the line. Mama manis. A girl that, in other words, by both of those cases, but the, what we just said, because he's not able to marry the woman, because it's forbidden for him to marry her, right? Because they were close relations, relative, uh, relative. So therefore, what is the fine that he has to do? What is, part of the fine is that he has to pay the money, but he also has to keep her as a wife. He can't marry her, so he can't. So the, uh, that takes away the whole fine. Doesn't apply to those cases. I, I, arguing on our Mishnah, of course. Hamim um, Enes, a girl that rejects her marriage. Because she was sold by, not, she was sold into a marriage by her brothers because the father passed away, right? So she's allowed to reject that husband. We're probably talking about where the husband did not actually consummate that marriage. She's a little girl. And now she gets raped or seduced. There's no more, um, there's no more fine because she was once married. Uh, that takes away the fine for some reason. Okay, islandess, a girl that's not uh, sexually developed, even if she uh, gets older, she doesn't develop. So, ain't la knas for late pita. There's no knas. We'll see why in it soon. And a man that um, he, uh, is a, a woman that got, that got divorced, um, leaves, her husband. leaves her husband because the husband said that she wasn't a virgin. She's probably claiming that she, she that he never had relations with her. Um, but uh, if someone rapes her, uh, she doesn't get the money now after that story. So she can't be considered. She can't be considered basula to get the Maya Rias and Maishnias. We're going to go back now and explain what's going on. What was the forbidden relations? What's the secondary forbidden relation? Forbidden marriages. Ile Rias, Arias Mamish. If we wanted to tell me that Arias, what does it mean, Arias? Arias is the, um, you know, the list in the Torah of the, uh, of uh, thou shall not uh, marry or this and that, all of those, the, the laws in Achrimais, right? In Shniyas is Midivri Seifrim. What's the secondary Arias that's talking about the rabbis? I'm on top of Lamed Vav. Um, on 36a. It's talking about the what the rabbis um, added on to those. In other words, the, it says you can't marry your mother or your grandmother. The rabbis added on. No, you, you can't marry the mother. The rabbis added on the grandmother. Or, yeah, and other types of things that were rabbinic uh, um, forbidden, forbidden marriages. Um, so, Kivan de Marais Achazila, one second. One second. That's really what you're saying. Then, uh, biblically, that was a correct marriage. Amayin laknas. Because the rabbis say that you can't get married, so the, the biblical law that he has to pay her 50 coins goes off. 
because the rabbi said that they shouldn't uh, do that marriage. You should still have to pay it. Ella Arias is Chayvimisis Bezdin. It must be that when it says Arias, it's talking about those very close relations like the daughter. Shnias is Chayvikrisis. And the Shnias, the secondary, is not rabbinic. It's just that it's Chay of Karis, the punishment of excision, but it's not rabbinic. It's like the sister, we said. So, Aval Chayvi Lavin. But if it would be just a negative prohibition, Yeslam Knas, then there is a, a, a fine. Our Mishnah, our Bryce over here said that there's no fine for Arias or Shniyas Larias. That means that if there's a negative prohibition, for example, in Mamzeras, then there would be a fine. Mani, who, which opinion would this be? This is Shimonati Mani. If you remember when we first started this chapter, we said that there were two opinions, well, it was really three opinions. The opinion of our Mishnah that even if the marriage is not possible, this still is a fine. There was the opinion of Shimonati Mani that says, if the marriage is possible, but it's a violation, in other words, they need a divorce afterwards, even though it's a violation to do that marriage, there's a fine. Then there was the opinion of uh, Shimon ben uh, Manasseh, who holds that if there was a violation involved, there's no fine. There's three stages of this. So we were saying that there's a fine by Mamzeres, even though that's a forbidden marriage. Why? But the fact is that the, it is a marriage, but you just weren't allowed to do that. You know, they need a divorce. What was the third case? Where there's the third. The third opinion is that if there's a violation there, yeah, in other words, if they need to get divorced because of that, right. so then there's no fine there as well. The night, the, the rule of Alaysi Aliisha that he should keep her as a wife doesn't apply. So I do have to have uh, the punishment for is that, is that accepted? No. That's that was rejected. That we said, if it's the rabbis that are doing this, then how could they take away the uh, the thing? This is just the rabbis just tell you behavior. They don't change the the background of it. Right, the background still exists. That's a normal way of thinking. I mean, there is uh, sources that say otherwise, but we're not uh, accepting that here. Ikadamri, Omani, and who would, who, which opinion would this be? This would be Shimonati Mani that says that Yeshlem Knas by a Mamzeris, let's say, that there is a fine there. So this price would follow uh, Shimonati Mani. Ikadamri, there are those that say, remember Shimonati Mani? He was the one that Dash and Kolas. No, that was Shimonam Sunni. I'm sorry. It's not the same one. Um, yeah, it probably is. Yeah. Ikadamri. That those that say Arias means Chayvi Mises best in Vichayvi Krisis. Pass me the pencil. <clears throat> Made a mistake here. Yeah. That's good. Um, Vichayvi Krisis. Shniyes. Is Now, if that's the case, who does that follow? And Shniyas is Chayvelavin. That means that really there's no Knas even by if someone rapes a Mamzeres, by anyone that has any prohibition on, the, on, the, on that marriage. Mani, who would that follow? Rib Shimon ben Manasi, that's the opinion of, opinion of Rib Shimon ben Manasi that we had earlier in the, in the, in the chapter that says there's no Knas if, there's a, if it's a prohibited marriage. Okay. Um, that's our review. Still a little bit more, but nah, nah, that's basically the, the full review of the chapter. Now, a woman that rejects her husband, she doesn't have a fine. The, if, she's a refusenik. She refuses to stay with her husband. So, um, actually, he doesn't even need the, the divorce. He's, she walks out of the marriage without a divorce. Why? Sorry. Because that was all the whole marriage was just made by the brothers. Oh. He's under 12 and a half. Oh, okay. She's under 12, uh, under 12 and a half, I think. And um, that would be um, Mian. Mian. Yeah. It's called Mian. So what happens now? If after that she was raped or seduced, there's no fine. She was at one point married. Uh, so the Gemara says, You're telling me about this girl 
that's walking out, oh, it must be that it's before, it's before 12. She's not 12. Uh, Mian only takes place before 12. She has to be under 12 years old to do this. But what you're basically telling me is that if a girl that wasn't in a marriage like that, then there would have been a knas. Mani, who holds that there's a knas if someone rapes a girl that's under 12? Rabbanani, damri ketani yesh knas. It's the rabbis. According to one opinion, Reb Meir's view, it was only in between 12 and 12 and a half. According to the rabbis, it was before. So obviously we're following the view of the Rabbanan. Because there's a knas by a regular girl, and there's no knas by the manas, which only takes place under 12. A masefa, let's go further. Ailanes, remember how we set up this price? It's the opinion of the Rabbanan that there's a knas under 12 years old. Ailanes, the woman that's not developed, she doesn't have the knas or, or the money for the being seduced. Oh. Who would that go according to? That follows Reb Meir. Reb Meir holds that a katana doesn't have a knas. She doesn't go through the stage of being a nara. She goes straight from a katana to being considered an adult. Because she never develops. Nara is uh, an adult. Nara is the girl that's in between 12 and 12 and a half. Oh, okay. But, but so that's her puberty stage. This girl never ha- goes through puberty stage. Wow. She goes straight from a minor to an adult. So why is there no knas for the islandess? Because there's no nairus. Who holds that? Who holds that there's only a knas by a na- nara? That's Reb Meir's view. When I ask a question now, okay, Reisha Rabbana, the Sefer Reb Meir. You started off telling me about the the Mima Enes that followed the, rab, the Rabbi's view, that Akhtana has a Knas. Then you tell me Eilenes that's following Reb Meir's view, that Akhtana doesn't have a Knas. Maybe you want to tell me the whole thing is Reb Meir. And when it comes to Mian, he holds like Reb Yehuda. What is Reb Yehuda's view about Mian? Reb Yehuda holds that a girl that's over 12 can still do Mian until 12 and a half. So which girl doesn't have a knas is the Mima NS when she's over 12 and a half, when she's over 12, before 12 and a half? Who doesn't have uh, the islandess that doesn't have the knas? That's because we're following Reb Meir's view that says a katana doesn't have a, kna- have a knas. And that was if Reb Meir that says a katana doesn't have a knas, uh, uh, katana doesn't have a knas. Holds like Rabbi Yehuda that says that a Mema'enes can go until 12 and a half, then all of this would work. Tana doesn't have a knas, and not, so therefore an islandess doesn't have a knas, the underdeveloped. But the Mema'enes does have a, should have had a knas when she was 12, till 12 and a half. But because she's a man, she doesn't. It would fit. The problem is, Misabala, does her mayor hold like Rabbi Yehuda? There's a problem. But Tanya, Masai, Habas, Mema'enes, her mayor argues with Rabbi Yehuda. When, until when does a, can a girl reject her husband if she was married by the brothers? Until she has two hairs. Rabbi Yehuda has the later stage when the darker hairs overcome, over, uh, out, uh, outnumber the, the white hairs. The, not the white hairs, the white skin. Um, so Rabbi, the Rabbi and Rabbi Yehuda argue about the manas, how, how long it is. So you can't say that a mayor holds like Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda, let's go the other way. It's really Rabbi Yehuda. And he holds that a katana doesn't have a knas. That way, the islandess doesn't have a knas, but the Mema'enes would have had a knas because it's until 12 and a half. But because she's a man, she doesn't. But does Rabbi Yehuda hold that a katana doesn't have a knas? I have a statement from Rabbi Yehuda in the name of Rav that says that this... Um, that uh, about the katana uh, not having knas is the words of Reb Meir. Vimisa, and if Reb Yehuda also holds of that, Reb Yehuda and Reb Meir, so did Reb Meir, Reb Yehuda, me by like, then Rab should have said that it's the words of Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda. The Gemara says, Haitan al Savla Kremir, Bechada, Palagala, Bechada. The Gemara does what it has to do sometimes, as it says that this is another view, not one that we know of, but holds in one area like Reb Meir and holds in one area like Reb Yehuda. And by the Nara, 
he holds by the Meme Enes, he holds like Rabbi Yehuda, uh, um, that that uh, Meme Enes could continue until 12 and a half. And by the Islandess, he holds like Rabbi Meir, that a Katana doesn't have a Knas. Rafam Amar, my Meme Enes. Rafam says, what does it mean, Meme Enes? That it's a girl that's rejecting her husband. It just means her Ru'uyilamayan. It means the age of when she's allowed to reject, which according to, to um, the Rabbanon is, is until she's 12. Not until 12 and a half. The Gemara says, if that's the case, listen to Iktana. Then why don't you just say Iktana? This is Kasha. That's okay. That's a, that's a problem. I mean, there's, there's certain things where a woman's liable when she's 12. Other times it's when she has like no hairs. Right. So like, which one do you... Right. So there's a machlekes here, Rabbi and Rabbi Huda, how long the li- the neon uh, extends till. Right. Okay, let's leave the Gemara over here. We got up to Kasha. I'll leave it for today. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you, Rabbi.